So these are parts of the plant's cell. Okay, just looking at the cellular level. On the outside here, we have the cell wall. And on the inside, we have the cytoplasm or cytosol, okay? Which is the fluid part of the cell, and the cell wall is the structural part of the cell. Um, when um, substances pass through or go from one cell to the next, um, they can go by different routes. Another way to consider, another label for the inside of the cell is called the symplast. And for the outside of the cell, the cell wall, it's called the apoplast. Okay, so if it goes from the um, cytosol to the, of one cell to the cytosol of the next, this is called the symplastic root. All right, but in order to do that, it has to go through this connecting structure. What is this connecting structure called? Yes, plasmodesmata. So the symplastic root goes through the plasmodesmata from one cell to the other. Okay? Everybody get it all out. Okay? The if you stay in the cell wall and just go through these cell walls, this is called the apoplastic root. So what is the difference between apoplast and cell wall? Uh, apoplast is um, just referring to that structure. It doesn't necessarily have to be a cell wall. It's the exterior part of the cell. Okay, and then lastly, if you have a substance that is flowing through the cell wall and then into the um, cytosol, so it's going from apoplast to symplast, this is going to be the transmembrane. Root. Okay, because it's going through the cell wall and then it's going through the plasma membrane, back through the plasma membrane into the cell wall, so on and so forth. Okay, so those are our three um, routes that substances can take as they pass through cells. Okay. All right, so the first process, major process we're going to talk about is evapotranspiration, and that's um, exactly what it sounds like. We have evaporation, which is powering the transport of water through plant cells, okay? And what what vascular structure does water flow through? Xylem. Through the xylem. Okay, and the xylem had two cellular structures. What were they? From the last time? Tracheids. Tracheids. And vessels. Okay, but our journey starts at the root. Okay, so this is a cross section of 
the root, okay? And these little appendages coming off of it are root hairs. All right, the xylem is on this very inside here. Right? And the water is out here in the soil. So we need to get the water from outside into the xylem. So the first step is Water and minerals, I'm going to zoom in here. Um, are actively transported into the root here. You actually don't have to actively transport the water if you can create a hypertonic solution in the um, root here, right? So if you actively transport minerals, then the water will flow into it, right? Okay, so I'm going to put some minerals here, and then the water is going to follow it, okay? Okay, and this is going to exert a positive solute pressure. So this is actually going to push water that way. Okay. But it's not very much. All right, so here's a bunch of cells. Okay, the whole structure itself would be filled in with cells, but we don't have time to fill them all in, okay? So you have your water. It's now in the root here. And it's now going to go via the symplastic root or apoplastic root towards the center of the root. Okay. Until it gets to this inner layer, this is called the endodermis. <clears throat> and within the endodermis, you have this waxy layer called the Casparian strip. And this Casparian strips forces all water to go through the cells of the endodermis. So now they can no longer go the apoplastic route. They have to go, if they're apoplastic, they then have to go transmembrane into the endodermal cells. And then from there, this is kind of like the last, so it has to go through the cell. The cell then <clears throat> um, can filter or, or whatever it needs to do, whatever me metabolic process it needs for that water before sending it then to the xylem. Okay, so that's how it gets from the root, from the minerals, from the soil that it's in into the xylem. Once it's in the xylem, then we will have a, a different process for transporting it through the rest of the... So the endodermis is like a filter? 
Yeah, it's like a filter. Okay, so now let's look at, any questions on this? Okay, so now let's look at the rest of the plant, okay? So we have these roots, okay? We talked about the little root hair. Water's in there now, and now we have the xylem, which is a, essentially a continuous tube which goes through the whole plant. Through the root system, through the shoot system, stems and leaves and then connects all the way to the openings which are called, in the leaves, which are called stomata. But it's one continuous tube, like a giant straw, or like your blood vessels, how they're all connected. Okay? So there are a few different forces then at, at play here. So you have water molecules in here, right? And the water molecules form bonds between themselves, right? What's that called? Cohesion. Cohesion. And then the water molecules also bind to the walls of the tracheids and vessels. What's that called? Adhesion. adhesion. Okay, cohesion and adhesion then. Oops. Counteract gravity. All right, because gravity's pulling it all down. Okay, the water's going to want to just fall down these straws. But if you have um, small tubes, the adhesion will help to pull it, keep it up, and the cohesion, the connecting water molecules, will help string them together as well. So that's why a straw works when you suck on it you have a force which is pulling water, but the water is also pulling against itself because of these hydrogen bonds. Okay, so the water molecules are sticking together. <coughs> and then outside you have beautiful sunshine. And the water molecules right here at the stomata then are going to evaporate due to the heat provided by the sun, right? So this evaporation creates a negative pressure, a pressure that is pulling the water, pulling on, on everything within the tube. Whereas in our root, we had a positive pressure, something that was pushing water in. This has a negative pressure, it's pulling water out. Okay, so as long as you have a string of water molecules that are all connected throughout this very sealed tube, everything is fine, and, and water will move through it.
Okay? But if you cut the tree, and then you break uh, the seal, and you get air in here, It's like having a hole in the straw. Have you ever tried to suck something out of, you know, drink a soda with a hole in the straw? It doesn't work, okay? So you're going to have uh, a disconnect, and then in order to, to fix that, you'll have to ha either repair, or the tree will have to repair or seal that. Um, but oftentimes, if the gash is too big, then it, it's irreparable. So that's how water moves through a plant. Um, some other problems that a plant might have is if it's too hot um, and there's not enough water, then they'll lose, the plant will lose water to the point where it can no longer um, make a continuous string of water and it will evaporate and it will lose water from its cells and it will wilt and die. Right? So one of the that can control that is through its stomata. Okay, the stomata are made of guard cells. And the way that the guard cells control whether they are stomata are open or closed is through um, um, water regulation, so osmosis. So if the guard cells are hypertonic, then water will flow into the cell. and the stomata will open. And in this state, it is uh, turgid, or it would be like uh, when the muscle is flexed, only it's not a muscle, okay, but it contracts when it takes on water and that opens up the stomata. Okay, but when the cells are hypotonic, they will lose water and they will be closed and flaccid. So if it's too hot, one, thing's, one thing that a plant can do to prevent water loss is to close its stomata. And then it just won't move water through its cells. Or through its, yeah, through the plant. So if you water the plant, all right, so that's the xylem, yes? Uh, I just have a question. So okay, all right, so now we're going to talk about the movement of sugars, okay, through the plant. And this is through a process called translocation. Okay, this is reliant on, however... Our xylem. Okay, what um, what is the uh, network, vascular network which transports sugars? Okay, good. 
But the phloem doesn't work without the xylem. And what's in the xylem? We just went over. Water. Water. All right. So there's wa water, and it's moving up the plant. And it's right next to the phloem. And we're going to need that water to move our sugars. OK. In translocation, we're going to talk about sugars, but um, the process is also for any other substance which is going to move through the plant, right? Um, the sugars move from source to sink, OK? So this can change, all right? The source of sugar in plants is where? Roots. Roots or leaves, right? Depends. Um, originally, they're going to come from the leaves, right? Because that's where photosynthesis is occurring. You know, some other parts are photosynthetic, depending on the plant. But generally, the leaves are going to be where the sugars are being uh, made through photosynthesis. Okay, and then uh, the sink is going to be where those sugars may be stored or needed. Okay, so uh, in the summertime, a lot of these sugars are going to go then to the roots and they will absorb them, form uh, starches and carbohydrate um, polymers, so that in the winter or in an area or in a time of year when photosynthesis is not active the root then becomes the source, right? And any parts of the plant that need to grow are going to be the sink, okay? So it can switch throughout the year depending on the season and time um, and what's going on in the plant. All right, so we're gonna say this is the source up here. So let's say it's summertime, the sun's out, this would be the leaf. Okay, so down here is gonna be our sink. So at the source, we have lots of sugar in here. I'll move for you. All right, and then we have um, right next to our phloem. Um, is the companion cell. Okay, and what types of cells make up the phloem? Do you remember? So we had vessels and tracheids for the xylem and <coughs> sieve tube elements. Good. Those are the cells that make up the flow. Okay, so we have a companion cell, which is an intermediate between the source, any sort of other accessory cells, and our transport cells of the phloem. All right, these sugars are going to be in high concentration. So they're going to go into the companion cell either through, what route would that be? Okay, so it can go through symplastic or <coughs> apoplastic transmembrane, right, into the companion cell. Okay, and then the companion cell has a couple of, um, so then you get sugar in here. So it has a nifty process for getting the sugars into our sieve tube elements. So the first player in this is our proton pump. So what this proton pump is going to do is it's going to use ATP. To pump protons, let's use a different color. It 
into the companion cell. And so now we have protons in here. All right, the second part is we have a co-transporter or a symporter. And what does a co-transporter do? Transports. Okay, how does it transport? What does co mean? Together. Together, all right. So it ha you have this influx of hydrogen um, or proton ions that are going to naturally diffuse then back to the sieve tube elements. But as it does so, it's going to take a sugar cell with it. And so now you get all these sugar cells in your phloem. Okay, and this process then is called phloem loading. So now you have all the sugar in here, these sugar cells. And that's going to make a hypertonic solution, which is then going to attract water. Which is going to fill this cell. This cell is now going to have lots of sugar and lots of water. And it's going to create then a positive solute pressure, which is going to push everything down the cell. So the water and the sugar solution that we made there is going to naturally then diffuse and go through the rest of the cell, or the rest of the phloem, through the process of bulk flow, okay? So we have active transport in the proton pump, uh, which then has facilitated diffusion and a co-transporter going into the first cell of the phloem. Then we have passive transport in osmosis, and bulk flow moving down. Yes? So the proton can kind of do like a U-turn type deal and meeting up with the sugars and like they're basically like on. Yeah. So because we have a hypertonic solution of hydrogen on this side because of that proton pump, yeah. they're gonna naturally diffuse back. Diffuse back and then kind of do a little bit. And then they'll take some sugar with them. So the ATP that is being used, yeah. So at this point, it's being used for transport of those hydrogens. All right, now, now we've got water and sugar down here, and we have the sink, okay? At the sink, this is where... Sugar is actively transported. Into the sink. <coughs> okay, and this is, you know, depending on what it is, might be some storage root, like a carrot, okay, um, where it's going to make these carbohydrates, um, or it may be being used for energy, whatever, whatever the process, um, or whatever the sugar is needed for. 
Okay, but then the water isn't needed. So it doesn't want to just create this big sugar water. It just wants the sugar. The water then will get recycled back into the phloem. Sorry, back into the xylem. Yes. So the source is the leaf? Um, in this, it can be the leaf, but yeah, in this instance, if it's in the summer, and that's where photosynthesis is occurring, that's where the sugars are being made. Okay, so uh, the sugar is made there. Mm -hmm. like through the photosynthesis. photosynthesis, yeah. And then the, the sink would be the roots, but yeah. So, so the, the, the water is kind of, the water and the sugar are kind of going in separate ways. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so it can be then reused back in the xylem and go up the xylem and then be reused back in the phloem. Yeah. And do those protons from above, do these kind of cycle Yeah, you can just reuse them over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you could, however, Okay, so let's redraw this. Here's our xylem. Here's our sieve tube elements. And let's say this is winter time now. So now this is our source, and this is our sink. All right, so I want you and your neighbor to go through the process again. How would it work if the source and the sink are flipped? Okay, and then we'll talk about it. 